Without question, John Wick is one of the biggest tough guys in the history of cinema. His body count ranks higher than nearly anyone this side of Thanos. And he didn't need a bunch of glowing stones to do it. All he needed was his guns, his wits, and his training as one of the world's deadliest assassins to kill more than 200 people in his first two movies. The upcoming John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum promises to bring more gunfire, fist fights, and stabbiness than you can shake a Glock at. The only things about these movies that seem to flow more than blood are why wild fan theories. Here are 10 of the wackiest, wickiest fan theories about everyone's favorite hired killer slash dog lover. John Wick is Johnny Utah? Could former FBI agent Johnny Utah have taken his training and experience as both a federal agent and a wanted bank robber to become the cold-blooded killer known as John Wick? This fan theory from Reddit poster ItsBT thinks it could be true. In 1991, a group of bank robbers wore masks with the faces of former US presidents. They only targeted the cash drawers, never stopped to rob the bank vaults, and always got away within 90 seconds. The string of bank robberies drew the attention of the FBI. The Bureau assigned rookie agent and former Ohio State University quarterback Johnny Utah to the case. After successfully infiltrating the gang, Utah's cover is blown. He escapes a death trap aboard a plane, but the gang leader, Bodie, gets away. Utah tracks Bodie to Australia, where Bodie wants to surf the biggest wave in the world. Utah lets him escape and tosses away his badge. Another connection linking Wick and Bodie comes from the video game Payday 2, in which both Wick and Bodie are playable characters. John Wick, son of Rambo? Could John Wick have gotten his training as a killer, not from any law enforcement agency, but from dear old dad? Reddit user Visit Jared theorizes that Wick came by his special set of skills through his genes. The theory goes that John Rambo came home after a deployment in Vietnam to undergo special forces training at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. During his stateside stay, Rambo met a woman. The couple fell in love and planned to get married. He also bought a brand new 1969 Mustang and left it with her for seat keeping. When Rambo returned years later, he found out that the woman had married a civilian and had two children, including a boy named John. The children take the name Wick after her husband, but the boy doesn't know that Rambo is his biological father. Wick later follows in his father's footsteps, undergoing special forces training and honing his talents. He returns home, takes his father's Mustang from the garage, and rolls down the road. Much like his father mowing down America's enemies in the 1980s, Wick applies his skills toward decimating his enemies in the Russian mob. John Wick as a divine comedy? In a theory that might take you back to your high school English class, Reddit user Cheesy80s postulates that the entire structure of the first John Wick film is taken from Dante's divine comedy. The parallels start with John Wick being cast out of his comfortable, safe purgatory after his car was stolen and his dog was murdered. Wick's late wife speaks to him in dreams throughout the film, much like Beatrice visited Dante in the classic work. Wick's mentor Marcus also guides him through the treacherous Russian underworld, much like the Roman poet Virgil guided Dante through hell. The gold coins Wick stored in his garage allow him to access places that no amount of money could get him into otherwise, such as the Assassin's Nightclub at the Continental Hotel. In much the same way, the coin Dante carries, known as an obol, allows him to travel the river Styx, a place no mortal being could access. From the nine circles of hell in the Russian mob scenes, to the resemblances between Wick's and Dante's opponents, the parallels here could make any literature professor proud. John Wick as a sequel to Constantine. The character of John Wick goes through more bad guys than your average superhero, but could Wick also serve as the spiritual successor to another Keanu Reeves comic book character? Reddit user Vince Falcone has developed a theory that the film Constantine, based on the DC Comics character, is actually a prequel to the first John Wick film. In Constantine, the title character is an occult detective whose soul is bound for hell after a suicide attempt as a teenager. After years of smoking, John Constantine is diagnosed with lung cancer. He asks the half-angel Gabriel to heal him, but Gabriel declines. In a final confrontation with Lucifer, Constantine earns his way into heaven, but Lucifer cures him of his cancer, keeping him alive and waiting for him to lose his golden ticket past the pearly gates. Years later, John Wick's wife Helen dies of cancer. After Russian gangsters steal his car and kill his dog, Wick goes on a killing spree. Could it be that Lucifer moved Constantine's soul into Wick's body, implanted the cancer in Wick's wife, and caused Wick to believe that the gangsters he was murdering were actually demons. If Wick had supernatural powers, it would explain his uncanny ability to survive gun battle after gun battle. 
The Continental is an assassin's union? This theory has less to do with the characters of John Wick and more to do with his environment, namely the Continental Hotel. Reddit user H. Talon poses the idea that the Continental isn't just a hotel, but a sort of labor union for assassins. According to this theory, the Continental offers many of the same benefits as a traditional labor union. Members pay dues and receive job training, medical care, and other services. The union also helps to negotiate contracts between members and employers, with standard rates established for specific services. The gold coins act as a currency for union members. In Chapter 2, Wick violates one of the union rules, in that he refuses to honor a marker from mob boss Santino D'Antonio. The marker obliges John to fulfill a favor, kill Santino's sister Gianna, which would allow him to take her place on the High Council. After Wick kills her, Santino hires more assassins to kill Wick. And we all know what happens to anyone sent to kill John Wick. The trailer for John Wick 3 reveals that Wick has broken one of the Assassin's Union's primary rules. He killed Santino on the grounds of the Continental. Such a breach of professional etiquette costs Wick his Union membership, rendering him excommunicado and the target of every assassin in the Union. Welcome to Good Burger, John Wick. Could the Russian mob have used a regional fast food joint for its money laundering operations? Reddit user Big Schwartz poses the theory that the brains behind Mondo Burger could also have been the spark that ignited John Wick's revenge killing spree. In the 1997 movie Good Burger, Kurt Boswell, head of the California-based burger chain Mondo Burger, reveals his scheme to make his restaurants the biggest burger chain on the planet. Most of his scheme involves injecting the meat with illegal drugs, while also tainting the secret sauce used at competitor Good Burger. By using drug-infused meat and targeting competitors, Mondo Burger could have been an ideal setup for a money laundering scheme. Unfortunately, the bumbling buffoons at Good Burger exposed the scheme and sent Boswell packing. Back to his Russian mob backers, the Tarasov family. The Kurt Boswell character was actually Yosef Tarasov, son of Russian crime boss Vigo Tarasov and John Wick's former employer. Boswell, or Tarasov, frustrated at his failure, lashed out at the loser Wick by stealing his car and killing his dog. And we all know what happened next. John Wick, Time Traveler? How did John Wick ever find the time to develop his superhuman skills and abilities? Easy, if he had a time machine. Reddit user Ideas by Chuck supposes that Wick could have all the time in the world, if he was also the time traveler known as Ted Theodore Logan. In Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, Ted's father threatens to send him to military school in Alaska if he fails his history presentation. Thanks to his friend and Wild Stallions bandmate Bill S. Preston Esquire, and their mentor from the future Rufus, Ted passes his history history class, gets with his princess babe, and starts to play the music that will create the utopian future. At least that's what happens in one timeline. In another, Ted fails his history class, and his father ships him to Alaska, where he learns the military discipline that will form the core of his being as John Wick. He could also have acquired or stolen the time machine from Bill, and used it to learn all the deadly arts from every teacher throughout history, including the legendary Greek philosopher and totally awesome wrestler Socrates. Winston is the devil. In another twist on the idea of Wick as a supernatural agent, Reddit poster Robot Johnson proposes that Winston, the owner-manager of the Continental Hotel, is actually using the assassin as his instrument to take control of the underworld, in both senses of the word. As John Wick mows down baddies like a not entirely grim reaper, Winston can consolidate his power over the remnants of New York's criminal gangs. As the souls of Wick's victims leave this plane of existence and travel down below, Winston can also gain power in the true underworld. While Winston has manipulated Wick into doing his killing for him, Winston, as Satan, may have also imbued Wick with his unerring accuracy, his lethal speed, and the ability to endure almost any wound, all while keeping the flow of souls moving at the pace of a rushing Red River. Vigo Tarasov wanted to die. Why would a powerful Russian crime boss like Vigo Tarasov intentionally put himself in the crosshairs of the world's deadliest assassin? Reddit user Figurative Icicle supposes that Vigo was ready to give up his life of crime and wanted to die. After the spoiled Brad Yosef sparks Wick back into his murderous ways, Vigo tries to protect his son and sends a hit squad to Wick's house. Wick goes through the hit squad like a hot knife through butter, then comes after Yosef and Vigo. After Wick destroys Vigo's blackmail material, Vigo gives up the location of Yosef's safe house. Vigo tells Wick about how neither of them can escape the criminal life they've built for themselves. Although Vigo tries to escape by helicopter and stabs Wick, he recognizes the futility in trying to escape the Baba Yaga, as Wick fatally wounds him. 
John Wick takes place in the Matrix. You knew this was coming. The most popular theory regarding the Wickverse. How else could you explain one man's superhuman ability to shoot as many people as possible? Writer Tom Guise developed his own theory about the connections between John Wick and Keanu Reeves' other famous gun fu role, The Matrix. At the end of The Matrix Revolutions, we find out that Neo really isn't the one prophesied to bring an end to the war between humans and machines. Instead, Neo dies. The Matrix reboots, and the Oracle tells the girl Sati that they may see Neo again. But how? Since The Matrix reset itself, could it be that Neo was plugged back in and sent to kill more agents? Only this time, his memory was wiped, and he remembers himself as John Wick. When he gets in trouble in John Wick Chapter 2, he meets the crime lord known as the Bowery King, who bears a striking resemblance to Neo's mentor, Morpheus. What do you think of these theories? Which one do you think fits in Wick's world? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Screen Rant for more great videos just like this one.